Hello everyone! Welcome back to Doodling Through Education. Today we have a science video. So for my CC students, this is CC Cycle 3, Week 17, Science. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the second four elements on the periodic table. So before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you never miss an episode. And also I wanted to draw your attention to a link that I put in the description. If you want to support Doodling Through Education, you can do so through that link. It's through a website called Buy Me A Coffee. And on that note, let's start doodling. Like I said, we're going to be continuing today through the periodic table. And we're gonna talk about the second four elements that are found there. Let's hop into the first one, and that is boron. Boron has an atomic number of five, meaning, of course, that there are five protons in the nucleus. It also has an atomic mass of about 11. Really, boron is pretty rare on Earth. Pure boron is not even naturally found on Earth, but this element is found in many different compounds. The most common compounds that boron can be found in are borax and kernite, which are found in sedimentary rock formations. Boron is often mined and refined into boric acid or borax. Boric acid is used in many different things, which can include insecticides and flame retardants and antiseptics, whereas borax is a powder that can be used in detergents, makeup, and even for glazes on pottery. A fun fact about boron is that the largest mine in the world that mines borax is located in California in the Mojave Desert. If you were to set boron on fire, it burns with a green flame, and this is useful because it can be used to create green fireworks. Some ancient civilizations have also used this compound and used it as borax for thousands of years. The uses of boron are still being developed and many scientists and doctors think that boron even has a potential to be used as a medicine to help treat arthritis. The next element that we're going to be talking about today is carbon. Carbon has an atomic number of six, meaning there are six protons in the nucleus and it has an atomic mass of 12. Carbon is one of the most important elements to life on planet Earth. It can form more compounds than any other element found on Earth, and it is one of the most important building blocks for plant and animal life. So this means it is one of the most abundant elements in the human body, the second to be specific, and we'll get to the first here in just a little bit. Carbon is found all throughout the Earth, and it is found in many rock formations such as limestone and even marble. Carbon can be found in carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere and even dissolved in oceans and other bodies of water. It can be used for fuel in the form of coal, methane gas, or oil, which is used to make gasoline. You can even use carbon for ink and printers and painting. If you are taking notes on this video, you are using carbon as well because it is also used to make what we call the lead part of pencils. In fact, it isn't lead, it is carbon. Diamonds are made of carbon and are considered to be one of the most valuable gemstones. Go ask your mom or your dad to look at their wedding ring to see if they have a diamond in their ring, and if they do, then you are looking at carbon. The next element that we are going to talk about is nitrogen. 
Nitrogen has an atomic number of seven, which means there's seven protons in the nucleus, and it also has an atomic mass of about 14. Nitrogen forms what's called a diatomic molecule, which means that there are two nitrogen atoms per molecule in the gas form. So nitrogen gas, N2, is two molecules of nitrogen. When it is in a gas form, it does not typically react with other elements or compounds. Nitrogen is a liquid at negative 210 degrees Celsius, and if you were to look at liquid nitrogen, it would look exactly like water to you. The Earth's atmosphere is even 78% nitrogen gas, which is interesting because we often say that we are breathing air or oxygen, and we don't say we're breathing nitrogen. Nitrogen is also found in all living organisms on Earth, uh, plants and animals, and plays an important part in the formation of proteins and nucleic acids. We use nitrogen to make ammonia. Ammonia is then used to create fertilizers and can even create explosives. Another way we use nitrogen is in the liquid form, and we use this as a refrigerant uh, to keep things cold. And last, let's talk about oxygen. We're all familiar with oxygen. It has an atomic number of eight, meaning there are eight protons in the nucleus, and its atomic mass is about 16. As you probably already know, oxygen is an important element that is needed by most life forms on Earth. Under normal conditions, oxygen is a gas and is composed of molecules that are two oxygen atoms, and so we say it is O2. Oxygen is all over the Earth. It is all around us and is one of the most important elements known to us. Oxygen makes up about 21% of the Earth's atmosphere, and oxygen is also one of the atoms that makes up water, hence the name H2O. So how is oxygen one of the most important elements for life? Well, oxygen is used by animals in the breathing process. We take oxygen in, and it gets transferred across our lungs to the rest of our body. So, in the medical world, tanks of oxygen are used to help treat people that cannot breathe very well. It helps to put more oxygen into uh, their lungs. It is also used um, for scuba divers who need to stay underwater for long periods of time, or astronauts who need to be up in space for long periods of time. Because as you know, in water, you cannot breathe, and in space, you cannot breathe because there is no oxygen available. An interesting fact about oxygen is that it is found in the air and is produced by a process called photosynthesis. This might sound familiar because this is a process in which plants take carbon dioxide and turn it into oxygen. So next time you take in a big deep breath, we can thank trees for helping to provide us with the oxygen to do so. In our whole entire solar system, only the Earth has this high of a percentage of oxygen. And that's all we have for today. I hope you had fun learning about our second four elements on the periodic table. And like I said with the last video, I would like you to study these four elements this week. Study um, how we can use them, where they're found, and maybe even go and try and figure out who discovered these elements originally. I think that would be a great extension project for my CC students on this topic. And on that note, remember to be kind, follow God's will, and take care. Bye.